Hi folks, welcome to this video on glycogen loading, also known as uh, carbo loading, but it's more technical term is uh, glycogen loading. So, uh, what are the key things that we need to know about this? Well, there are three key things about it. What are we trying to do with uh, glycogen loading? It's only endurance athletes who are going to who are going to do this process. You can store around about ninety minutes, maybe two hours worth of glucose and glycogen in your body. Um, so that's easily going to last you a game of football, a game of netball game of basketball, hockey, things like that. What happens if your event goes over an hour and a half, two hours plus? What if you are a triathlete? And iron, what if you're into the Ironman competitions? What if you're a Tour de France cyclist? What if you're a marathon runner? You need to be able to store more glycogen. So glycogen loading, we are loading glycogen into the system, is for endurance athletes only. Um, its aim is to increase glycogen levels in our muscles and in our liver in order so that we can delay fatigue. The classic line they give for marathon runners is when they've hit the wall. Hit the wall means that you have run out of glycogen. Okay, you are, or you're perilously close to running out of glycogen. And that's when you get jelly legs and you see these people in the London Marathon not walking properly. If they can glycogen load, they can store more glycogen and they will avoid hitting the wall. In other words, they will delay fatigue. Now, the specification only talks about one method of glycogen loading, what's called the seven day process. And I'm gonna deal with that first. I am also gonna cover a second method of glycogen loading, which takes place the day before, just to show you different ways it could be done. But if it was me revising for the exam, I would just focus on the method one uh, strategy of glycogen loading. So we'll have a look at that now. Right, so method one is related to this graph here. Now, as you can see, these are days one to seven on the bottom. Now, day seven, and I'm just going to quickly add this on so we know what it is. Day seven, that is, let's say it's a marathon, that is race day. That is the day of the London Marathon. Okay, so that's Sunday. We come all the way back across Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. Now, what do you do? The aim of method one is to actually reduce glycogen levels in your body. We're trying to get rid of all the glycogen in your body. And you might be thinking, hang on, I thought we were trying to store more. We are going to, but via this method. What are we going to do? Okay, we're going to do the following. We're going to do that. In the first few days, now when we say the first few days, we're talking about days one to three, one to four. We are going to eat low-carbohydrate diet. We're going to eat virtually no carbohydrates. In fact, some people try to avoid eating carbs altogether. They eat fats, they eat protein, but they don't eat carbs. But at the same time, I'm going to continue to exercise. So what we could essentially say here is, what we're going to do is, if, the, if I'm going to draw a line on the graph here, this is our carbohydrate intake during the first few days, okay? So the purple line is the carbohydrate intake. In contrast to that, the blue line is our exercise level, okay? So the blue line represents how much we're exercising. The purple line is representing um, the uh, carbohydrate intake of our diet and as you can see what's happening as a result well we are just ruining the amount of carbohydrate in our system we're really reducing it we are reducing the glycogen levels in our muscles that's what we're going to do on days one to three one to four what we're then going to do is this we're then going to taper our training we're going to reduce our training so our training was at the top here now we're going to virtually bring it down to nothing at all okay and at the same time, we are going to massively increase our carbohydrate intake, okay, during those final few days. Now, what that is going to achieve is something very, very important. It's going to achieve something called super compensation, okay? What does that mean? It means the body is forced into storing more glycogen. Your body likes normality. It likes normal things. What you've done in the first part of this week is you have smashed in a few high training sessions and eaten no carbohydrates. Your body hates that. It's like running out the petrol tank in your car. It can't function properly. So when you then dramatically reduce your training and increase your carbohydrate intake, your body says, thank God for that store everything. Store every bit of carbohydrate, every bit of glycogen that comes into the system. So whereas normally you'd be able to store maybe 90 minutes or two hours worth 
of glycogen with a norm with with a, with a normal diet and a normal daily routine, you force your body into storing three and a half, maybe four hours worth of glycogen. Because it's stored extra because it doesn't know if you're ever going to do this again. It doesn't know if you're ever going to massively increase your training and massively reduce your carbohydrate intake. So it stores more. And we call that process super compensation where the body is forced into storing more glycogen. So that is method one, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this writing now so we can then just have a look at a couple of advantages and disadvantages of this method. I'm going to dispense with the pen because my handwriting is atrocious, as I'm sure you're aware. But what we've got here is the benefits. So the benefits are we get increased glycogen stores through this process of supercompensation. I can now store a lot more glycogen, a lot more carbohydrate in my system. As a result, that is going to delay fatigue. So I'm not going to get tired as quickly. And it's going to ultimately increase my time to exhaustion by up to 30%, uh, nearly a third. I'm going to be able to run for a third longer. Before I start, before I fatigue entirely, before I hit the wall. So that is a massive bonus if you're an ultra endurance performer. So the disadvantage is then, you know, you have very poor recovery in those first three days when you've literally depleted all your glycogen stores because there's nothing in the tank. You can't function properly, as I've said before. You're also very irritable because you're tired, you're worn out, and there's not you, you've not got enough fuel to function on properly. As a result, again, in those first three days, in your carbo-depleting stage, you've got an increased risk of injury because you're more likely to make errors and mistakes whilst you're continuing to train with virtually no carbohydrates or glycogen in the tank. And as a result, by the time you get to like Wednesday, if this is Wednesday, your self-confidence about that race on Sunday has literally gone. Your mental preparation is shot to pieces because you feel absolutely awful. You're absolutely exhausted. So although it does definitely work, there are definite side effects and disadvantages. So what we're going to look at now is a second method, an alternative method, but like I said, if I was you, I would focus on this method one for my exam preparation. Method two, what can we say? Well, this isn't a seven-day process. It's the day before. So straight away, there's an advantage over the previous method. Is you just do this one day before you, uh, you've you got your marathon. So if you're doing the marathon on the Sunday, you will do this on the Saturday. Okay? What you do is you do a three minute high intensity activity so this guy here is doing a three minute blast out on a rowing machine three minutes as hard as he can for no longer than three minutes right well what is the benefit of this what it does is it opens what we call a carb window Three minutes of doing high intensity activity, your body is shocked. It goes, "What? Where, where did that come from?" So if you, it opens a carb window, so if you eat any carbs now, you will store them. You will you will store as many as you can eat. Okay. So what you've got to do is, you've got to immediately eat carbs, and here's the, one of the downsides within 20 minutes because the carb window doesn't stay open for very long and the, obviously the downside is realistically how much carbohydrate can you eat in 20 minutes not as much as what you could over a two or three day period in the previous method so here's where the advantages of one and the disadvantage of the other and vice versa okay um so as we've said there the advantage of this method is you could just do it the day before. Obviously, you're not going to have any pro muscle damage or protein damage because you're not using protein tissue or muscle tissue, sorry, to as an energy source because you've not hammered your body for seven days. This is a day before procedure. It, it's three minutes high intensity activity. You're not doing three or four days of long distance running with virtually no carbohydrates in your system. It opens a carb window. You eat those carbs, you store the extra amount, but realistically, how many carbs can you eat in 20 minutes? Not many. There's a couple of general downsides to both these methods. You need to increase, as we mentioned on the previous side, water intake to help store extra carbohydrates. Well, what's an obvious downside to both these methods then? You're going to have some bloating. Okay, you're going to feel a little bit bloated, a little bit heavier, things like that. Um, and like we said, you know, with the previous method as well, the key disadvantage was the feeling tired in the first part of the week to midweek of your major event, which isn't always great. It's not good for your self-esteem either.
So there are two methods of glycogen loading, but like I said to you, focus on method one, the seven-day strategy, what you eat and when, how you train and when, and the overall impact that has on your body. Hope you found this video useful, folks.